Yeah, sir, Big Stewie checking in. Another this in that trap house, trap in that trap house. You know we get into that paper, get into that money. You know what I'm saying? I got my dog in here. You know what I'm saying? Represent that West Coast. You, you getting it that real bad. You presidential up. Come Cartier, on, man. You know this, it up. You know I, 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 young I boys see what you're doing. Man. I see what you picking. I'm picking up what you Come putting on, down, Come on, you ain't Stewie. got to bust it down, man. You got to keep it playing Jane. Come on. Tell me about growing up in Cali, man. You know what I'm saying? Bay yeah. Area? Yeah, grew up in the Bay Area. You know, Cali is a, um, that's why I love Atlanta so much. Um, Cali is a very diverse community mm-hmm. you know we got a lack of black people over there but in the bay area it's a lot of black people where i'm from and um we grow up kind of like lacking a lot of culture mm. sometimes and i feel like it's slowly changing though we, right we're starting to get our own restaurants and our own bars and our own spots and everything that we can control the narrative but um growing up in cali is tough because you forced to grow up kind of fast right you know what i mean you be nine ten years old parents already be talking about a job you wow. know what I mean? <laughs> like you, you forced to grow up fast. It's it's very cost. The cost over it's there expensive. is 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 very expensive. You be paying thirty two dollars for a hamburger. Stop playing. You know twenty dollar tacos. Come on now, stop playing. You know what I mean? It, it's it's very expensive, but um, it it turn you into a beast though. It will turn you into a monster to make you where anywhere you could go, you know how to communicate. That's where I get my lingo from. That's mm. where I know how to speak from the Bay Area. We big on knowing how to present ourselves and talking to people and look a man in the eye when you talking to him and shake his hand. You know, we 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 learn those morals and those aesthetics very early. But see, I got some legends in the Bay. Like, yes, sir. You know E40. Come you know on, short. Come on, man. Short dog. Come Don't on. play with that. Mac Dre. Mac, come on, man. Come on. Felix so, Mitchell. Come on. So so tell me this, like, growing up parents-wise, family, what was that household looking like? Mom, so dad, up, like, you know what I'm saying? I you know, grew up kind of backwards. I always mm. tell this, right? Like, when I was a kid, I ain't really struggle, mm. right? My parents owned a real estate company, uh, owned a few restaurants, and uh, I used to be a, a stubborn kid, you mm-hmm. know, a spoiled kid. And I used to talk down on people and roast people for not having on the shoes that I was able to afford and everything. And then my parents got into some trouble due to some things my stepdad was doing. Mm-hmm. And we lost everything. Wow. Lost our cribs, lost our cars, lost everything. And that's when I started feeling the struggle around 18, 19 years old. I never knew what it felt like to be cold until mm-hmm. I was 19 and couldn't afford a jacket. Wow. You know, so that that always made me humble and un- and make me understand at any given moment in life things could change, your circumstances could change. And um, I just appreciate people. You know, I'm humble because I appreciate what people can do for you and what you can do with people. Um, and growing up in my household taught me that. You know, my mom is the same way. Uh, my pops was actually in prison when I was young, so I never really got a chance to, like, meet my dad at a later age we spoke on the phone and everything but i never really got to like meet him in person uh so i learned a lot from my mom but i I would say when we struggled is when i really started understanding like what life really is and that made me who i am today why is it that you know considering you got mad respect and how you grew up in the beginning you know parents having money why do you think that like a lot of black people especially young black men we always put down each other that possibly grew up in different households yeah like it's like oh because my mom and daddy had money, because my parents are doing better than you, I got to be soft, I got to be this, I got to be that. Yeah. Like, why Why is that concept in these it's a, folks' It's mind? a defense mechanism, mm. right? It's people who don't got it and, and feel like, you know, I, my only thing that I do got is to make fun of you. Mm. You know what I mean? For having something I can't get. I tell people all the time, like, it was a, it was a, a rapper from my neighborhood that was like, oh, uh, Simba grew up. I was like, what you, mad because my parents out hustled yours? Right. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, they did what they were supposed to do. Facts. But in certain communities, people don't take it that way because they don't have another way out. And they mm. see you with a way out or see something going good for you. And that's why I think it's important for us to give back. But at the same time, you got to give back from a distance sometimes because mm. your, your neighborhood could be a detriment to you. Your community can want to tear you down as much as you want to build them up. Right. Um, but that's something I feel like we got to we got to stop doing is, is is bashing people from coming from good families, because at the end of the day, that's everybody what we all want. From a good, everybody wants to come from a good family. That's what we all want. So like, what's the point? Of, <laughs> yeah, like there's no point in making fun of somebody because of what they come from. And you didn't have it at that time. Go harder for what you could do and do better for your kids so they can live that way. So what would you say the difference is from like growing up? Like, did you ever spend a lot of time in L.A.? Yeah, I used to, so my mom used to move around a lot. Mm-hmm. So my mom used to always, like, take me to L.A., Disneyland. we move around uh, certain just shops and everything. And um, I remember just being a kid out there, bro, and I always just loved the energy. Mm-hmm. So when I actually started going down there was around, like, 
I say like 2012, 2013. I just get in my car and just drive down there. Mm. Had a few friends from the Bay that lived down there. And I was like, man, I think this is where I need to be. Because every time I was out there, I was learning something. Right. Sometimes at home, you get so comfortable around your community, you, you know start getting yeah. stagnant. You know That's, everybody. You know what everybody know. Right. You know every studio. You know every artist. So it's just like, what else is it for me to do? And every time I would go out there, I would learn. I would learn something new, how to write a hook, mm. you know, song structure, uh, voice control, just all these different things about the music industry. So it made me just naturally want to move down there to learn more. Right. So so it, growing up in L.A. is different. Yeah. Folks go out there and think it's just a kick it zone. Yeah. A lot of folks get robbed out there. Yeah, it's been yeah, happening yeah. over years. Rest For in sure. peace, PNB Rock. I For mean, sure. that situation, Pop I read smoke. about it. You know what I'm saying? That was something different. Yeah. But what would you tell some folks about there just about just going out there? Because it's a different it's a different world. It's just like it's sure. certain places in Atlanta you don't need to go. For sure. You don't need to stop at this gas station. First thing you got to realize about L.A. is it's a difference between L.A. and Hollywood. Mm. Right. Hollywood is where the fun is. Right. Right. But what's happened is in L.A. when PPP hit. Right. And everybody mm. started getting that money. People from L.A. start going into Hollywood a little mm. more. You know, they could afford the restaurants right. and start going to them clubs. So now you're running into people everywhere. So um, for artists, I always say, man, get you some security. You know what I mean? Don't be posting where you at in real time. Wait till you leave. Right. Um, for the everyday person, just be cautious. Right. You know what I mean? Be cautious of your surroundings. Know where you're going. If you got a bunch of jury on, take that. Take it off. You know what I mean? Mm. When you go to the club, you got your people with you, cool. But if you just walking around by yourself on Hollywood Boulevard, there's probably some youngins out there that might try to get you who didn't spend their money and they trying to get it back. You know what I mean? So you gotta you gotta take precaution. So I heard I heard you saying something about jewelry. Like you you might consider not being as slashy. You guys, I mean, yeah. you, you you cool. Like yeah. You got you got the nice little Cuban on. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Real classy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what's that mindset come from? Um, I just feel like it's a it's a trick. It's a mm. trick that we that we run on our own people to make us think that somebody better than you because they, they got a, a bigger chain or, mm. or they know more than you because they got a better watch. When in all actuality, bro, we all got the same 24 hours and the same access to everything. We just got to get out here and get the information to go do it. And I don't think a chain or a watch should separate my intelligence from somebody Come who don't now. have one. Come you know on, what Come I mean? on now, Simba. So if, if if I could make a change, you know, and put it down, but I'm still in my early phases of right. being a rapper. You, you know flex what I mean? A little, you got so the I'm flex. like, I'm trying to figure out a way to to do both. Maneuver, yeah, yeah, to maneuver it. But, but over time, I for sure going to take it off. But I see like Kendrick, he don't really wear too much jewelry. J. Yeah. Cole, you know what I'm saying? Jay-Z definitely don't wear too much jewelry no more. I think that it is changing at this point. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think it's you do what you want to do. Special occasions. But they also... At later points in their career, true. Okay. Look at Hov when he first came out in the eighties. He had a mouth full of yeah, gold. Yeah, you right. J Cole got a song called "Mr. Nice Watch" on his first project. Mm. You know what I so mean? It's growth. It's growth, bro. Okay. It's growth. So look, give me this: Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Bay Area. Bay Area, Mount mm-hmm. Rushmore. Yeah, come on with it. Simba, Simba, and Simba. Come on. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Damn. Sure, going to hit me like, man, why you let that young nah, nigga say nah, that, man? No, nah. Bay Area, Bay Area, Mount Rushmore. I'm gonna have to say Too Short, Forty, Mac Dre. And we was talking about this yesterday, Messi Marv. Come on, Messi Marv hard. Yeah, Messi yeah, Marv hard. Yeah, Messi Marv. So look, so the experience, just as far as like, how did you get like just so linked in with all these big dogs? You know what I'm saying? Of course, you you got skill, right? Yeah. That's hands down. But like, I'm talking about game stamping you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like game getting on stage and saying what he said. Like two chains rocking with you. I'm talking about Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah. Money bag. Like yeah. a lot of these cats out here, a lot of people might not have even heard of you yet. Yeah, for sure. How the hell? Yeah. Did you get this conglomerate of 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 top tier artists just rocking with you on your team? So my mom always told me two things, right? In business, once find a problem and fix it, mm. and two things always come full circle, right? And one thing I noticed in hip hop today is we got a lack of just the cool individual, mm. right? We got the gangster, we got the dude that's on drugs, we got the emo you got rapper, a lot of dudes on drugs, yeah, we got <laughs> a lot the emo. of crackheads. <laughs> There's a lot of crackhead rappers out right now, bro. Yeah. Come on now. We got the emo rappers, but the cool dude is kind of distinct today. Mm. And I noticed that was something that was missing. That was a void that I could feel. Um, and by being nostalgic, by being a lyricist, um, I bring back certain feelings to these legends that I feel like they feel fits the criteria of what mm. they think a rapper should look right. like today. And something that's missing from the game, right? We've kind of boxed the cool guy out. And I think, you know, that's what people gravitate to me about the most. I'm a, you know, I'm a good person. I ain't looking to use nobody. 
you know, or misuse nobody. You know, I tell people all the time, it's okay to use me, just don't misuse me. Hey, you, you know, come on. Um, but I, I, I feel that's the main thing is I fit the criteria of what a lot of legends feel like a rapper should look like today, or something that's missing from the game, and they gravitate to it. Right. So this last thing I saw on your um on, on your Instagram, I don't know how long ago it was this funk flex freestyle. Yeah. I gotta salute you. I yeah. feel like a lot of artists are afraid to. Speak their mind about how they feel, yeah. especially when it comes to radio personalities, bloggers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know academics. People kind of hush their mouth when it comes to academics. I, I shut, don't know shut why. Shout out to act. I rock you, with that. You know what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, like, you know, some people don't express. It's okay to have, you know, controversies. Like, For okay, sure. I don't agree with what you said, but I'm respect you as a man because it For was your sure. opinion. So, what made you even come at that freestyle with flex like that? It's kind of what you just said, bro. It's it's showing people like. You could have a problem with somebody and have a conversation about it. Mm. It ain't always got to be violent. Mm. It ain't always got to be vulgar or dissing somebody. You could say, I don't agree with you in a nice way mm. and still shake hands and go on about your day and be Flex. cool. So, um, you know, that, that kind of hurt us over in the West when Flex was saying what he was saying about Pac. Right. But I wasn't about to go up there and disrespect that, man. Right. That's a legend. You right. know Flex. what I mean? I wouldn't know a lot of music today if it wasn't for Flex. Right. So I just found a way to word it. To where he that. could, yeah, to where he could understand, like, man, that's how we feel. Like, you ain't had to do all right. that, you know what I mean? But I respect you for your opinion at the same time. So it was just really like wording it in a respectful way because I didn't want to feel like I was disrespecting them right. or come across disrespectful or anything. And I got to applaud you as a black man because I just feel like a lot of young cats out there like really don't know how to deal with their emotions. Yeah. They don't really know how to deal with We not problems. taught that. Yeah. We not taught that. Like all we taught is like my mama used to tell me when I was a kid, somebody hit you, hit them back. Right. You know, somebody do something to you, you do it back. And we grow up with that mentality when it's in all actuality, a conversation could save everything. Could you imagine all the lives that could have been now. saved with a conversation? Come on now. You know, so it's like, I feel like one thing for me, man, like even on my platform right now, we on tour. I'm going around highlighting black businesses. Come on now. Everywhere we go. Come on, Sim, you might be us, my favorite favorite rapper out right on, now, man. man. A lot of us weaponize our platform. You know what I mean? We want to be the toughest and the hardest, but it's like, bro, we out here trying to get it as a community. So if I got all these eyes on me right now, why not share my platform with my people so they could get it too and we could all be out here winning as a culture? Us as black people, we only make up for 13% of the population. Come on, man. So we got to stick together because we create 99% of culture. Everybody want to walk like us, talk like us, on, act man. like us, except us. You know, we the only people that tear I, each other down. I, I rock with you, dog. You like, where, where did this mentality come from? Like, so the young cast really need to tune into this. Like, where did you where did you get this from? It was it one of the things that you just saw what was going on and just like, okay, let me figure out what's going on in this world that we living in. Now I feel like it. let me be different. It's a com it's it's a combination of having an understanding of both sides. Like mm -hmm. I said, I grew up a little backwards, so I grew up with money as a kid, and I was able to see the finer things. And then later in life, I was able to see the things my friends and people around me didn't see yet. So I understood the dynamics of both. And I feel like I'm an incubator. Like I'm a bridge that could mm. kind of help explain what those things is. Real you know? Thug. Yeah. Like I, I, could, I can understand what things is. I'm very future forward. I can see things before they happen. Um, and I think it's just being aware, you know, being aware of us, bro, as people. Like we... We, we've been tearing each other down for years, mm. you know what I'm saying, and going against each other for years. Let's see what could happen if we did the opposite for a change. We Come tried on. the other way Come on now. of tearing each other down and Come killing each other. Let's see what could happen if we talk Come about something. 